Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, I would like to spend some time and uh, talk about circumference of a circle. Um, this lecture is part of the course of Advanced Mathematics for High School Students. It's presented on Unisor.com and that's where I suggest you to watch this lecture from because there are lots of very useful notes to each lecture. Now, um, circumference of a, uh, of a circle. Now, everybody knows, right, that uh, if you have a circle with a radius r, then circumference is 2 pi r, right? Where pi is something like 3.14192, etc. Some irrational number. Yeah, everybody knows that. And why am I talking about this? Well, let's not forget that my purpose um, is not actually to provide you with certain facts um, in mathematics, uh, but to develop creativity, logic, analytical thinking, etc. So, right now, my question is, well, how people came up with this formula? What's the history of development of this formula? And um, what what can a reasonable person uh, say about um, circumference of a circle if he doesn't know the formula? So imagine yourself as the person who doesn't know what actually the formula is and uh, you're trying to derive it, something like this. So what should you do? All right, so the question is what is um, a circumference of a circle? I mean, we um, talked about lengths as something which is um, based on straight lines. So you have some kind of a unit of measurement, and then you can measure something like this by counting how many times this unit fits into this particular segment. And we still had problems because sometimes um, it doesn't really fit the uh, integer number of times. So we have just thought about how rational lengths um, is supposed to be done. We've divided this unit into um, ten tens or hundreds or whatever and we're trying to fit it. So even there we had problems. Now we are talking about a curve. I mean the unit uh, of the measurement doesn't fit to any particular part of it, right? So that's the first problem which we have to face somehow. And um, what can reasonable person uh, do or think about if he wants to measure the length of this circle? Well, the first time um, you think about the circle you and you want to measure its, um, its length, it's probably to approximate it. How can it be approximated? Well, let's just think about the following process. First, you divide a circle into six equal parts. Now this is 360 degrees, so each one of them is 60. Right? Now, the circle, by definition, is set of all points on the plane which are equidistant from one particular point, which is called the center, and the distance, let's say, is r. So, what do we have right now? Now, if this is a center, let's use the letter O, and this is A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, and A6. Now, we have here a regular hexagon. Now, why is it regular? Well, obviously, each uh, radius is equal to R, so each triangle is equilateral, uh, equi equilateral triangle uh, and since the angle at the top is 60 degrees the other triangles are also 60 
right? So it's equilateral triangle. Um, and therefore, these are also R equal to R. All sides of this hexagon are all e uh, equals to or equal to R as well as the radius. Each one is equilateral triangle. Isosceles because these are two radiuses and 60 degree uh, at, the, at the top, so it's uh, equilateral triangle. So, can we say that this hexagon approximates the lengths, uh, the perimeter of this hexagon approximates the, uh, the length of the circle? Well, yes, at some point we can say that yes, approximately it is equal. Can we improve this approximation? Sure, absolutely. Here is the process. Let's just have a perpendicular to each side and connect the points and now we will have instead of hexagon we have a 12-sided regular polygon. It's very easy to prove that this is regular, right? Now, um, let's call it B1, B2, etc. Now what I would like to say is that the perimeter of this next one is probably closer to our um, circle than the perimeter of the original hexagon. The 12-sided polygon looks like it's closer, so it looks like it's a more circular um, in its form. So I presume that the perimeter of this hexagon, uh, of this 12-sided polygon is closer. Well, let's calculate. So the perimeter of the first one, this is my first approximation, um, and I have 6R, right? Each side was R of the hexagon. Now let's think about the 12-sided uh, polygon, and for this I will um, change my picture and I will have it a little bit more. So these are my A1, A2. This is my center. This is R, this is R, this is R. Now we have dropped a perpendicular here, got the B1. So my purpose right now is to find what is A1, B1, based on whatever I know. Well, this used to be 60 degrees, right? So now this is 30, and this is 30. Okay, fine. Um, how can I calculate A1, B1? Well, let's put this point P. And I can say that from the Pythagorean theorem, A1, B1 square is A1, P square plus B1, P square. What A1, P I know, that's half of this, which is R divided by 2. But B1, P, I don't know. However, I can find it out what's B1, P from OB1, which is the radius, right, R, and OP. And OP, in turn, I can find out from the Pythagorean theorem, because this is half of the R, and this is R. Right? So, a couple of Pythagorean theorems um, will lead us to uh, the, the answer. So, let's just do this calculation. First of all, OP. Now, OP square is equal to O A1 square, which is R square, minus A1 P, which is half of the A1 A2. And you remember that this was the equilateral triangle, so A1 A2 is also R. So this is half, so this is R over 2 square. Equals 2 3 quarters of R square. So O P is equal to r square root of 3 divided by 2, right? OP square is 3 r square divided by 4. OP is square root of this. Okay. Knowing OP, we can find B1, P1. So B1, B1, P is equal to 
radius OB1 minus OP, which is this, minus R square root of 3 divided by 2. Or if you wish, R divided by 2 times 2 minus square root of 3. That's why B1, P1. This is this one. So now it's very easy to determine what's A1, B1 from the Pythagorean theorem here. A1, B1 square is equal to A1, P square, which is half of the R, plus B1, P square, this square, right? Which is R square over 4 times square of this, which is 4 minus 4 square root of 3 plus 3. Is that right? It's a little... Mm -hmm. Let me just think about it if I didn't make any mistakes. So equals two four um, R square plus 7 r square, so it's 8 r square, right? 4 and 3 is 7, and 1 from here is minus 4 r square square root of 3. That's what it is. So, my first approximation had side equals to R, six sides equals to six R. That's my first approximation. My second approximation is side is equal to, let's just think about it. We can um, reduce it by four, right? Four, four, and this would be two. So it's R square times 2 minus square root of 3. So my second approximation is side equals square root of this, right? R square root 2 minus square root of 3. And now we have 12 sides. And 12 sides equal to this times 12, and I already calculated it somewhere, 6.21 r. So if you multiply square root of 2 minus square root of 3 times 12, it will be 6.21. So my next approximation with 12-sided polygon is this one. Are we getting closer? Remember, 2 pi r, that's what we are thinking that we are approaching. Pi is 3.14, so it's 6.28 r. That's approximation. So there are much more decimal numbers here, but this is the first two after the point. Okay, fine. So we've got next approximation. Well, let's go one step more. So instead of 12-sided polygon, we will do exactly the same as before, and we will consider 24-sided polygon by dropping perpendicular to each line, to each edge of the 12-sided polygon. So let's assume that this is now B1,
and this is obviously not R and this is A1 B1 which is this so this is 6 square root of 2 minus square root of 3 this is A1 B1 now we drop the perpendicular so this is an edge of 12 sided polygon and this now will be two edges of C1 of 24 sided polygon let's do exactly the same calculation one more time and see what happens first we calculated well this is no longer P let's put another letter let's say Q All right. so OQ OQ square from the Pythagorean theorem OQ square is equal to OA1 square which is R square minus half of this now half of this so it's R uh, square over 4 and square of the root which is 2 minus square root of 3 that's what it is that's my OQ square so OQ is equal to R times so it's 1 so it's 4 minus 2 so it's 2 plus square root of 3 divided by 4 am I right? sorry divided by 2 and square root is that right? so it's again 4 minus 2 plus square root of 3 so it's 2 plus square root of 3 divided by 4 so square root is 2 and square root is yes L looks okay okay that's my OQ now C1Q is equal to R minus this so R minus square root of 2 plus square root of 3 divided by 2 right this is my C1Q C1Q which is R minus OQ which is this I think I'm right finally A1C1 equals this square plus this square A1Q is half of this so it's R square over 4 let's put AC square A1C1 square A1C1 square square of this which is R over 2 and 2 minus square root of 3 right? I got rid of the square root because I'm squaring it plus C1Q which is this one square um, now let me just okay now this is a little bit more complicated so it's R square minus 2 uh, r square square root of 2 plus square root of 3 plus plus square root of this which is 2 plus square root of 3 over 4 and again r square am I right? yeah looks okay all right so the common denominator is 4 obviously now r square is everywhere so we can put r square in front of this and what's next well uh, so it's 2 minus square root of 3 plus r square which means since 4 is common denominator so it looks like it's plus 4 minus 
uh, 4 square root of 2 plus square root of 3, am I right? And plus 2 plus square root of 3. Now what do we have now? We have square root of 3 plus and minus. And now our square 2 plus 4 uh, 6 plus 2 8 8 minus 4 and divided by f by 4 so it's 2 minus 2 no minus 1 square root of 2 plus square root of 3 and finally a1c1 is the square root of this. This is A1C1 squared. So my third approximation, don't need this anymore. My third approximation is side equals R and square root of this. Square root of 2 minus square root of 2 plus square root of 3 such a big hierarchy of square roots and uh, 24 sides equals 24 times this and I have already calculated the result uh, yes 6.27 so this thing is 6.27 you see First approximation 6, second approximation 621, third approximation 627, and remember we still have to go something like this. So it looks like it does actually approaching our um, 2 pi thing. So it looks like we are correct. Okay, now let's go back. Why did I decide to do all these calculations? Remember I wanted to um, define what is a circle lengths or circumference actually of the circle lengths and I was saying that okay let's start with a hexagon then divide each side in two so we will get uh, inscribed into the same circle 12 sided polygon then again divide by two so it will be 24 sided and it looks like we are approaching something question is can I say that the limit of this process, whatever this process I have just described, by dividing the, um, the lengths uh, in two, having this perpendicular to this uh, edge, and then basically doubling the number of sides. Can I say that the result of this process, the limit of this number, whatever this number is, is a... Um, uh, the length of the circumference of a circle. Well, there are problems with this definition. Problem number one is, I have no idea if the limit exists. Right? I'm, it looks like it approaching something, but I have to prove it. That's number one. Number two, what if I, instead of hexagon in the beginning, chose, let's say, a square? and then double its sides, number of the n number of its sides. Will I get the same number? Right? So we have the problem of existing of the limit, and we have the problem of the uniqueness of the limit, regardless of the process I'm using, hexagon, square in the beginning, and then doubling, whatever it is. And now um, I am in the land of mathematics where I cannot really uh, absolutely rigorously prove you that uh, these questions can be answered quite favorably. So I will just tell you the result which is kind of outside of the scope of this course and the result is as follows. No matter what's the process of increasing the number of sides of our inscribed polygon is as long as the maximum length of every side 
maximum length of a side of every polygon is diminishing to zero. So this is the requirement. You know, when it, whenever we were doubling the number of sides, obviously the side itself is going down. Um, this is the length of the side r, this is less than r, this is even less than r, but we are increasing the number of the sides. So as long as the process um, assumes that the lengths, the maximum length of the side of the polygon, it doesn't even have to be a regular polygon. So maybe it's not regular, whatever it is, but as long as on each new step, the maximum, uh, the, the lengthiest, the lengthiest side is going to zero, then number one, the limit exists. Number two, it does not really depend on how this process is arranged. As long as the length of the um, longest edge of the polygon inscribed into the circle goes to zero. And as a result of this theorem that the limit exists and it doesn't really depend on the process as long as uh, the length is, uh, of the polygon is going to zero, then I can say with basically um, complete um, um, uh, uh, positive note that um, our length of the circumference of the circle is equal to this limit. Since I have proven that it exists, well, I didn't prove myself, but I'm just telling you that there is such a theorem which is outside of the scope of this lecture, that there is a theorem which actually states that no matter what the process is, there is a limit. And that limit we actually call uh, this number 2 pi. Well, there is one more thing here. I have proven this for one particular r. What if I will take a different r? Will I get a different number here? That's a different approach to this, which is, we didn't really touch it yet, but let's address it right now. Now, this is all related to similarity. Now, obviously, all the circles, which you can imagine, with all the different radius, are similar to each other. Why? Very simply. Circle is defined by the radius, right? So if I have two different circles, let's say this one and this one, what I can do, I can just have two tangential lines, use this as a center of my scaling. These are perpendiculars. Now, if I will use this as a center of the scaling, and the ratio between this and this as the factor of the scaling. Now, obviously, from similarity of these triangles, my radius will increase proportionally to the same factor, right? And since radius is uh, increased, and these are the lengths, th these are all the numbers, uh, all the points uh, which are on the same length from the center, let's say this one, then I can say, if I will take the parallel, I will say that this point will be converted by this scaling into this point. So whenever I want to find any I image of any point, I just connect it with the center, have a parallel line, and obviously from the similarity of all these triangles, this one and this one will follow the same um, proportionality of all the elements. Now, if these two circles are um, similar to each other, then my process of um, increasing the number of uh, edges in the inscribed polygon also can be um, proportionally transformed from this to this. So basically each, uh, let's say, a square here it will correspond to this square here. And obviously these squares will be similar for the same reason. And um, since this point goes to this, this point goes to this, etc. Which means that perimeters will be 
similar. So what I would like to say is that if the um, circumference of this circle relate to its radius as something like whatever the factor is, then it's exactly the same factor will be here because the circumference as, as a limit of this is defined as the limit of the polygons as they increase the number of sides, right? And each polygon is similar to this one, so the ratio between these perimeters and this perimeter is exactly the same as the ratio between the radiuses. So, if one particular cir circle um, uh, has the circumference equal to this, where this number is not this particular number, but some kind of a limit, whatever the li limit is, then in any other circle, the number will be the same. So, circumference is always proportional to a radius by the same number. Or if you wish, it's proportional to diameter, which is double the radius, by the same number. And historically it happened that its relationship, its relationship of the circumference between circumference and, and the diameter of the circle is actually signified by letter pi. So for a radius it would be 2 pi. Now, before going any further, I would like to kind of illustrate whatever I just said with a different process and instead of hexagon, I will take the square in the beginning. And let's see how it will go. I will do exactly the same thing first. So I have a circle, and I will inscribe a square in it. And then I will double the number of sides by perpendicular to each line, and having octagon. And then perpendicular to each side, and I will get 16-sided, 32-sided, 64-sided polygon, etc. So, how um, my uh, perimeter is uh, in increasing and approaching uh, the circumference of a circle? I would like basically to illustrate that we will do exactly, we will get exactly the same um, approximation, we will uh, approach the same number differently. Approach will be different because, because the numbers, every number will be different, but it looks, it will look like it will go into the same, uh, to the same limit. Okay, so let, let's just do one very simple thing. Now, if I have a square, now square, uh, square, now this is the radius, right? These are four radiuses. So this is r, this is r. So this is r square root of 2. So the perimeter on the first step, perimeter is equal to, so side equals r square root of 2, and uh, perimeter, which is 12, uh, sorry, four sides, it's equal to 4 r square root of 2. Now, let's just introduce a process. I will do it slightly different. I will not directly calculate, but let's assume that at some point we have uh, the length of this inscribed um, polygon equal to dn. Now, I will divide it in half and put a double number of sides. Question is, so this will uh, my a1, a2, and this is my b1, this is p, this is o. So my question is, how can I describe d n plus first, which is the edge of the n plus first uh, polygon on the n plus first step, in terms of dn. I would like to know this iteration between steps. Because if I will have this law of iteration, I can program it in the computer very easily, and the computer will calculate my uh, value of the pi 
uh, the longer I will run the program, the more precise I will have the results, right? Okay, how can I do this? Well, again, that's very simple. This is R. Well, actually, since all the um, uh, circles are proportional to each other, similar to each other, and proportional uh, radiuses and uh, circumferences, I'll choose the radius equal to 1. So I don't have to carry the R all the time. Now, if this is 1, now this is dn, so this is dn over 2. My OP would be square root of 1 minus dn over 2 divided by 2 square, right? That's my, uh, that's my OP. Now, B1P is equal to radius minus OP, which is 1 minus square root of 1 minus dn over 2 square. And since I know B1P and I know A1P, I can calculate D1, dn plus first square is equal to dn square over 4. This is the square of this plus square of BP, which is 1 minus 2 square root of 1 minus dn square over 2 plus 1 minus dn over 2 square, right? Now, this is cancelling this one, and I have uh, 2 minus 1 plus 1, 2 minus 2 square root of 1 minus dn square over 4 or 4 goes out, cancels with 2 4 minus dn square right? so here is my dependency dn plus first is equal to square root of this 2 minus square root of 4 minus dn square that's the formula iterative uh, process which uh, I can start from the d1 and I know what d1 is If r is equal to 1, then d1 is equal to square root of 4, right? d1 is equal to square root of 4. Now, how many sides? I have four sides. So the uh, first approximation is... No, 2. I'm sorry, 2. Square root of 2. Uh, 4 times square root of 2 is equal to, do I have numbers here? Uh, I don't, but one, okay, 141 times 4, 4, 5, 6, oh no, I have to have it, oh yes, 5, 6, 5, six. okay, 5, 6, 5, 6, 9, that's what it is, that's my first approximation with a square as um, prim perimeter of the square. Now, next approximation, D2, if I will put square root of 2 here, what should I have? I have uh, 4 minus 2, which is 2. It will be square root of 2 minus square root of 2, right? And then you multiply it. The perimeter will be, uh, circumference will be equal to approximately perimeter, which is 8, right? 8-sided eight by this square root of 2 minus square root of 2, which is approximately 6, 12, 29. Now, D3, if I will substitute D2 into this formula, I will get D3. And D3 is approximately, well, I put 16 times D3, which is perimeter, uh, 6.2432. Now, 32-sided polygon that's uh, D4. 
approximately 6.2734. You see, we are approaching 6.28 blah blah blah. And it's just an extra illustration that our process, while completely different from the hexagon-based polygon, right? It's a square-based process, but it's also approaching. And the more uh, sides you have, the closer you are to the result. So, basically, um, what I also have done, and I put it just into notes of this lecture, using this formula, and uh, going back to the hexagon, I can check if the formulas for hexagon correspond to this formula. Well, they do. I mean, if you will just put whatever the numbers we have for hexagon, 12-sided polygon, and 24-sided polygon, you will see that the de de dependency is exactly the same. If you will take the lengths of the he uh, uh, hexagon side, you will get the lengths of the 12-sided polygon. If you put 12-sided polygon uh, edge, you will get the 24-sided polygon. Exactly the same as the formulas in, uh, in the lectures I presented before. Well, that's it. And again, the purpose of this lecture was to explain you how people actually came to these numbers. And by the way, I did mention it before. If I will put this in formula into the computer and assign my the first as a square root of 2, uh, I will get uh, the approximation up to whatever, whatever I want, basically. Because the longer computer runs, the longer, uh, the more precisely my um, numbers will correspond to the lengths of the circumference of a circle. Well, that's it. I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. They are um, a little bit more maybe elaborate than whatever I put on the board. And it's just useful for you to, to know. This is how the circumference of the circle came to be, basically. That's how people develop this particular area of mathematics. and. Um, and we are all using the results. All right, thanks very much and good luck.